Hello everybody and welcome to something a bit different. This isn't a play now, this isn't a review, this is me reacting to comments. Stupid comments about Half-Life Alex. And for this special occasion I've chosen the website DSO Gaming, the dark side of gaming. A, a site that is normally quite uh, nice, I'd say. It, it seems to have its ear to the ground when it comes to more uh, indie or more niche types of games. So it's... Uh, it's a site I recommend people visit. The comment section, however, tends to be... Uh, I wouldn't call it a cesspool or an open latrine, but it is often close to being that. And you can kind of feel this thing coming through the screen, which is not a pleasant sensation, but for the purpose of this video, it'll make do. And the article in question is Valve explains why Half-Life Alex is not Half-Life 3 and why there won't be a non-VR mouse and keyboard version. The article just lists like the, the quotes from the interview that Jeff Keighley did with several people working at, uh, at the game. So let's dive right into right the comments. So, kind of sounds like he just said, we're too chicken shit to make Half-Life 3. Pardon, I don't want to mischaracterize what this person said. We we are too chicken, um, SH star T, to make Half-Life 3, so we decided to make a prequel VR title instead. We hope people like it. It was easier than Half-Life, than making Half-Life 3. Now, technically, it wasn't easier because a decade ago, it wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been possible. Getting to this point, took a lot of work, and I mean monstrous amount of work, not just from Valve, but from everybody that's been developing VR in the past couple of years. From Lucky Palmer, from John Carmack, who recently quit quit Facebook because he's interested in doing AI stuff now. I mean, it's not like Facebook ruined Oculus or anything, it's Kind of like that. It's very, very nearly close to that, that they, they kind of seem to have room. But th that's not what this video is about. And have answers like on point and like it wouldn't create a shitstorm releasing a VR prequel no one wanted. Well, you say now that you don't want it, but the uh, the statistics on, uh, on Steam kind of show something like really, really different. Like if you were to look up the best selling uh, things on Steam right now, it's the Valve Index. It's this. So it's uh, it's kind of hard to say that nobody wants this. And most importantly, okay, we'll get to this soon. Most importantly, um, seeing that nobody wants it, that's not really saying much because nobody wanted Half-Life. Go back 20 years. Actually, no, no, not 20 years. 25 years. And somebody tells, hey, you want to play Half-Life? And you're going to say, no, what's that? I, I don't know. Who cares? Because nobody knew what Half-Life was. And now nobody knows what Half-Life VR, Half-Life Alex is. All we've seen is a trailer. So until you've actually seen it in action, until you've actually experienced it or experienced the uh, experience of others do it, uh, you can only say if you want or not. Uh, it's not necessarily that you have to try it for yourself, but at least you should maybe keep an open mind and see if other people enjoy it and see what effect it has on them before you go in and say, no, this is evil or this is the best thing since crack cocaine. Oh, by the way, this video is going to be demonetized as hell because, uh, you know, I'm um, going to read the, the comments and uh, comments generally tend to be not all that super duper. Uh, uh, how should I put this? YouTube's gonna murder us anyway, so uh, maybe being on the restricted list is not actually a bad idea, since the kids are not gonna click on this, unless they put a really, really clickbaity thumbnail on it, and what will actually remember to put the thumbnail on it, and if he does, well, then uh, it's gonna be... So l let's go back to the comments. I have waited 13 years only to get ha a Half-Life through prequel and in VR no less, sadness beyond belief. Look at the bright side. You're still alive after waiting 13 years. How many people can say that? I know a bunch of people who can't. And of course, Valve giving fans the finger yet again. Now, if Valve wanted to give fans the finger, they would have just not made it. 
As simple as, as simple as that. They could have just not made us at all. And this is good. Uh, that's the real meaning of F <laughs> star CKU money. Screwing over your supporters, but not really people with even more money than you. I'm not sure what this is supposed to mean. Is it saying that uh, it, Valve is only not screwing over people with more money than it? It's not screwing over uh, who? SoftBank? Who? I always say Ubisoft, maybe. Bill Gates is not screwing over Jeff Bezos? I really don't understand the meaning of this. It's, this isn't about... Well, yeah, it is a bit of... It is a bit of fuck you money. Um, if you don't understand the term, uh, I, I first learned about this from the uh, the book uh, Cryptonomicon. Uh, and uh, the idea is that having fuck you money means that you have so much money that you no longer care, like, at all about what other people say about you. Because you have so much money, you can just climb on a mountain of money and look down upon them and say, fuck you. And they probably wouldn't even hear it because it's so far away. That's, that's the meaning. And that's actually a good thing for Valve. Because this, this isn't what you would call um, an easy thing to do, what they're doing. I'm gonna get to that soon, but let's let's first go into, into more comments. I basically earn close to six thousand to eight thousand dollars a month from freelancing at home. For anyone willing to work uh, simple freelance jobs two five hours a week every day from comfort of your home, and get good payment in the same. Try this gig. Except okay, uh, okay. I think Gina has the right idea here. Like one of the main main issues with uh, with VR is that it's expensive. But damn. This looks amazing. I'm gonna try it out. Like, if, if this, this thing's, this thing sounds, if I can get in this thing, I no longer have to work three jobs or two and a half ones if I can't make videos as a job always. It's two and one and a quarter, I guess. Man, it's gonna be amazing. I'm gonna click on this right now. I'm gonna go to this site. Oh my, it's gonna be amazing. People, we're, we're gonna have, this the channel's gonna come back. Like, Genus just saved the channel. We're gonna come back, we're gonna make more videos, it's gonna be amazing. Holy crap, with that kind of money I can move out, I, I can make a studio, I, I can, I can buy my blood back. Oh, this is gonna be great. Let's see what it is. Now, this video was initially pitched as an idea to just react to comments, and that could be funny, that could be something that could attract some views, but fundamentally, yeah, it wouldn't add anything to the conversation, that would it? it would just be noise, it would be, it would be something I call the venom. It's something that spreads, that gets into you and just takes over, you become part of the noise, part of the venom itself. You just perpetuate it, you spread it. You should probably have called it the plague, because that's more uh, in line with what it actually is. And as fun as that sounds, I mean, the, the making fun of people's stupidity, I just can't really do that. I mean, just that. I have to balance it out with something else. So let's have a deeper talk about Half-Life Alex. Alex comes to VR with really, really snazzy gloves and... Have you seen those gloves? They look amazing. Now, Valve has tried for many, many years to make Half-Life 3, and they've failed because of one fundamental reason. They couldn't come up with a, with a new idea. Half-Life 1 was the scripted linear shooter with a cinematic experience where you're always in game. The story revolves around you and it's there, it's palpable, it's not in a cutscene, it's not something that you see between missions, it happens around you, with you. And with one exception, I guess, when you get knocked out, you're kind of always in control. That was a new thing. Before that, uh, games were a lot less focused, a lot less uh, driven, a lot less... I think the term is uh, choreographed or maybe directed, a lot less linear. Uh, you remember Unreal, right? It came around, came out around the same time as uh, Half-Life 1, it, I think it came out in 97, and it was a game where you could get lost in. A lot of games before this were ones you could get lost in, and games after that as well would still have that kind of more open design where you could freely roam around, you know, the, the Doom kind of maze maps with secrets and stuff. and. 
Half-Life wasn't that. Half-Life was a clear point A to point B progression, and you would get there and you would do things, and you would have a, a scripted adventure that would always be the same. You would always have these same kind of encounters. Well, depending on the difficulty level, you would have more of a challenge or less of a challenge. And you had, in those confines, the freedom to act as you see fit. So it wasn't in the extreme that Call of Duty went to or Battlefield. Oh God, Battlefield 3 sucked. And I'm just talking about the first five minutes. I couldn't stomach playing more than that of the campaign. Half-Life had something new. Something that spearheaded an entire way to design video games, a new way to design video games, to make them a bit more like movies, and, and we see that in, in Red Dead Redemption 2, which is a fantastic movie. It kind of sounds from everybody that's played it that it's a horrible video game. Horribly designed as a video game, I mean. It, it's still fun to play when you're doing the stuff that's completely disconnected from the game itself from the the story itself from you know the everything else but it's the movie it is it could probably be a fantastic hbo miniseries like one or two season series with really hard, oh no they already have deadwood so it'd just be deadwood again i guess haven't seen it actually i just keep hearing it's good but anyway not getting off track half life 2 took that idea and added something new something that would give you even more power to break away from the linearity physics that's what it brought it brought brand new ways of interacting with everything around you you could break things you could you could make things balanced on top of other things now sure it may not have been the, the first game to try this i know for a fact that the original prey did try and have physics up the wazoo but that game was never never finished, never released. We got a different Prey 1. Did I say Prey 2? I don't know. Kind of hard to uh, keep track of things since I'm using Audacity. And if I uh, pause it, it's going to do a thing with moves it. Anyway, doesn't matter. Half-Life 2 really did something fantastic with a physics. Half-Life 2 Episode 1, I can't really say if it did anything new. It was just the sequel to Half-Life 2. It is... The one that people forget, honestly. What do you remember about... I, I Kind of the only thing I remember is the story bits. With Alex having a really strong reaction to seeing what what became of the, the people that were taken processing at the Nova Prospect when they were in the... Uh, the, the You know, the things that move around. The, what do you call them? The, uh, the ones that uh, they were all trapped in uh, when they got uh, taken prisoner by Breen. I mean, yeah, that's the kind of the only thing that I remember. That, that and Dog. Battling around with Dog a bit. But the second one, uh, Half-Life 2 Episode 2, that one brought open battles with like giant forest maps where you could roam around with your car and shoot those giant striders and, and that's it. It didn't really change anything. Well, actually, no, no, no. Both Half-Life 1 Episode, Half-Life 2 Episode 1 and Half-Life 2 Episode 2 did try to make an episodic game. That that was something that everybody was trying back then. Uh, they tried it, I, I think one of the, actually no. They've been trying to do this since the shareware days with the, with episodes you would get for Wolfenstein. And they kept trying and and the internet age, well, it was sort of the internet age back then as well. You could get it from BBSs. But they tried it later on with games like um, like Avalon, no, not that, Siege of Avalon. With, you know, every chapter being a book that you could download and play and that was episodic in its own way, and Valve tried, tried its hand at that, and, and it failed. Because an episode should not take years to make. It should come out every year at, at, the, at the most. Telltale did it. Better. Well, Telltale did it. If it's better or not, uh, it depends on what your, um, your um, reaction, not your reaction, your tolerance for low quality is when it comes to the... Uh, the way that they made some adventure games. Though to be fair, Telltale had really, really low, low resources, uh, not a lot of budget uh, when they were making the uh, the first Sam and Max games, when they were making the first uh, Monkey Island, well, actually the first, uh, the only Monkey Island season they made. They didn't even get to finish the series they were trying to uh, develop with uh, Escape, from, Escape from Boneville, with Bone, which is uh, turning into uh, its own series on I think Netflix or something. It's not from... Telltale didn't make that IP. It was from somebody else. But anyway, uh, getting back to the idea. They had linear 
gameplay, linear games with story-driven elements, they had physics and they had episodic. Episodic failed. So what could they do next? What could they do? Portal. They did Portal. Portal was the new thing that they did. They did Left 4 Dead, which, okay, granted, none of these were their idea. It was Kim Swift and the other people at uh, Watch McCollum that made Not Bacular Drop. They made Portal. And then Turtle Rock made Left 4 Dead, which was co op. And we, he had thinking on portals and we had co op. And Left 4 Dead turned into Left 4 Dead 2 a year later, like, like a better episodic game than Half Life was, which um, wasn't. Uh, it, I wouldn't say that Left 4 Dead 2 was bad, but it made, made Left 4 Dead 1 seem pointless. It made it seem like a demo, like something that shouldn't have been released full price. And it still does it to this day since Left 4 Dead 2 contains all the. now contains all the content in Left 4 Dead 1. Portal, however, Portal just got better and better with, with, with the years and with its sequel, especially. It's a sequel that added elements from a different game. Uh, what was it called? Uh, something The Power of Paint. And that, that added new layers, new mechanics, new, new strategies. It, it added a new dimension. To the game and you couldn't do that with with half-life painting gels on on a, on a surface and then bouncing off it that wouldn't have really fit half-life you needed something a bit more well i would say serious if you will not that that there wasn't any sort of humor in half-life but it wasn't that kind of almost comedic i'm a potato style of game, though they are both in the same universe and they do mesh with each other in terms of style in many places. But you, you couldn't fit Cave Johnson and Half-Life. No matter how much you tried, you just wouldn't wouldn't stick there. So they couldn't do that for Half-Life 3, but what could they do? Because Half-Life 3 had to knock the socks off people just as Half-Life 2 did, just as Half-Life 1 did. Because if it didn't, it would just be, yeah, this is good. Okay, sure. Like, don't get me wrong. It wouldn't be at the same level as Duke Nukem Forever. Nothing could be at that horrible, wretched level as Duke Nukem Forever, but it wouldn't be what Valve is. It, it wouldn't be Diablo. Well, actually, it would have been Diablo 3 if, it, if they did it like that. It wouldn't. They didn't want to make something that just reinforced the idea that they, that, that they stopped trying. Because they hadn't stopped trying. They kept trying and failing. And they set up their own in-house hardware division. Where they made the elements of CMVR and Cast AR, on which Jerry Ellsworth worked. And now it's its own thing. Well, it was its own thing. It got scrubbed because it didn't really have any success. And then it became a different thing, which just got kickstarted and it's a lot more successful. But fundamentally it failed to actually produce something up until now. And st Valve has tried different things. It, it tried to make an OS and yeah, the, the, the OS is there, but nobody's using it. It made Steam VR and it's there, but not a lot of people use it. So what's next? How, how do you make Half-Life 3? You don't. You can't. You can't make a Half-Life 3 that will be as always all inspiring as half-life 1 and half-life 2 were however you have money you have a vr platform that you help develop you're launching your own vr headset you have your own operating system so what do you do well a couple of years ago i said that valve well i have been saying this for years i think you've seen it in some of my shows i keep expecting gabe newell to walk up on stage at e3 and say half-life 3 is out now exclusively on SteamOS, drops the mic, leaves. That is how you push people out of Windows. That is how you give people an alternative. You force them to do it. You force them. You, you don't wait for the market to catch up to you. You drive a stake through the heart of the market and see it bleed and form into a different... It's a kind of vampire metaphor I'm going for, but in this case, the stake through the heart doesn't kill the vampire, it just makes a different vampire out of the, the first vampire. Should probably say tentpole or something else instead of a stake. I think I was going for a kind of different metaphor, but anyway, it doesn't matter. 
What does matter is that Valve did something with Half-Life Alex that is... I kind of don't want to use this word, but it was kind of brave of them because they knew they were going to get shit for it. They knew they were going to get their asses torn apart by the rabid fan base that has festered around them since, well, uh, Half-Life 1, uh, maybe Half-Life 2, maybe in, at least in the past decade has been festering and growing and becoming more and more uh, virile and more, um, I would say, maybe, maybe a bit kind of toxic in the sense of vitriol. You've seen that kind of community when the, when the Epic Game Store came out where everybody was defending Steam as being under attack, threatened. And kind of the same people are now attacking Valve for doing this. They, they feel betrayed and they shouldn't because you're not being betrayed. They, they, they've not made Half-Life 3 yet. They, well, they've made it several times, but they haven't released it. This is just something different. It's something that is made to drive people to VR. Make no mistake, VR is going to be a thing. VR is expensive as hell, but it's going to be a thing. It's going to be one of the new ways in which we can experience games. But up until now, there has been the problem. Why would I spend so much money, like 400 or more euros, on a VR headset when... What do I have to play on it? I have Beat Saber, I have Super Hot, and that's it. There, there's no triple one. Well, there's the Bethesda ones, but okay, the Doom one may, may, may be okay, but the rest, eh. There's no, there's nothing made specifically triple A just for VR. There's something made by a company that said, okay. We believe in VR so much that we're going to spend millions upon millions of dollars just making one VR game that shines and outshines everything else on the market. There hasn't been. Until now. Valve is doing that. Valve is putting its money where its mouth is. Valve is justifying the 30% cut that Steam takes out of every game they sell. They're putting that money Finally, in the development of a game, one that is meant to push boundaries, just like Half-Life 1 did, just like Half-Life 2 did, just like Portal did in some ways. They're doing that. And they're not making it expecting to become billionaires again. Well, they, they already are billionaires, but they know that it's not going to have a huge market. Now, currently, at this time, it's not going to have a huge market. Y yeah. The Steam controller, the Steam VR, Steam, the Valve Index thing is the best selling thing on Steam right now. And according to a friend of mine, that means that it needs to have at least 2,600 sales or something around that uh, that area, like within the day to get to that position, if I remember what he said correctly. So I'm not exactly sure what the, the top end would be, exactly how much it has sold, but the minimum would be around there. But it's still not not uh, the kind of install base you need to have a giant blockbuster. I mean, with their tech. But there's still VR out there. There is the cheaper ones, the the, the Windows Mixed Reality ones with, with which the game is fully compatible in a diminished mode because, it, make no mistake, it's built from the ground up for Valve Index to use all of its capabilities, all of the finger tracking stuff. It is made for that, but it will work with lesser experiences as well. So in total, you're going to have an install base of maybe 2 million. 2 million, that, that sounds like a lot, but not for AAA game. For a AAA 15 hour game, because that's uh, around what this game is supposedly uh, uh, going to offer in terms of campaign length. For that kind of quality and length, 2 million at $50 a pop, 50 euros a pop, that's, uh, well, that is still a lot of money. That's $100 million, out of which they don't give anybody a cut because it's their own game, but they, you know, they have the taxes thing and stuff, but it's still not the, um, the kind of cash that most AAA games need nowadays. Now, certainly it's... It's not being developed by the full team at Valve. 
And it's probably not going to sell the, the 2 million copies. I don't think they're banking on it selling those 2 million because there is just not enough VR out there. But it doesn't need to sell them now. It doesn't need to. It's just there to make an opening for everybody else and for itself, for its sequel, for its whatever they're going to do next. It is a game that needs to exist. It is what the future deems vital to exist. It is a fixed point in time, if you will. This game needs to happen as a VR exclusive if a VR is to have a chance, an honest chance. I'm, I'm gonna ha have no idea if it's gonna actually be good. No clue. They showed some scenes of it. It looks amazing. It looks fantastic. I like the gameplay that they're suggesting, but they haven't showed much of it yet. Probably you're gonna see more of it at the, the VGAs in like a month. But if it is good, if it is at least as good as Super Hot, then this is going to be the exact thing that VR needs. The proof that here you will find a VR game that is worth getting. You will find the killer app. Now, Job Simulator was fun, don't get me wrong, what I've seen. But this is Valve putting a lot of money where their mouth is and taking a lot of shit for it. But it's okay, they can take it, they're Valve, they have experience with it, and they have experience dealing it out sometimes as well with different incidents over the course of many years. But if they succeed in bringing VR to the masses with this, if they succeed in validating the choice that early adopters made when they invested hard-earned money into an early VR set, if this pays off. It's going to be a brand new world next year. It's going to be a bright shining future for all sorts of different experiences in gaming because it's going to be out there now. The genie is going to be out of the bottle. Somebody made a VR game, an exclusive VR game out of a PC centric hardcore series and it succeeded. Just think about what could be next. Especially if it succeeds on the gameplay part, not just financially. I stress this very, very much. It needs to be amazing to play. It needs to leave you wondering, whoa, dude, why haven't we been doing this for like a decade now? It needs to do that. If it can do that, three, four years later, we're going to have some amazing games. Yeah, they're going to be VR. A lot of them probably going to be VR. Consoles, or well, I mean the Xbox One, Scorpion, next, the next one's probably going to get VR too. PlayStation's probably going to get a different VR implementation again, because the old one probably won't be as good as what's going to come soon, because you kind of need the, the controls with the finger gesturing detection thing to work properly. We could get something that I can't even dream of. I can't tell you what it's going to be, because I don't know. That's, that's the idea of, of something new. It's not what I want. It's not what I expected. It's something that I didn't know I want. Th that's, that's innovation. It's not faster horses that we need. It's what we want. But what we need is something new. It's, it's the car. It, it's Tesla's Cybertruck, maybe. I don't know what we really need. But it's not Half-Life 3 that plays exactly like Half-Life 2, just with better graphics. Because that would not be Valve. That would have proved that Valve gave up. That would have proved that Valve became Blizzard and just resorted to making hats and nothing else. This proves that Valve is not yet gone. And mind you, all this comes from the perspective of somebody that doesn't have VR. I can't afford VR. I just bought a new PC. It's going to take me years to recoup the investment I put into this PC. Well, part of it. You guys paid for half of it. I very much like to thank you for doing that. Like, without you, I wouldn't have this right now. But it's up to me, myself and I, to trek the long road to VR. And it's going to take me two years, because I would love to have a Valve Index and that is insanely expensive, it's, it's an amount of money that is so beyond non-trivial, it's, uh, it's life-changing money around here. 
it's it's an investment I cannot justify at all. Like, not even in the slightest. Even one of the cheaper VR sets, the, the 400 euro ones, that is still unjustifiable to me, to my family, to the, the society I live in. But still, I want VR to succeed. Because I want people out there to be able to, to have what I can't. 20 years ago, when I was playing, well, not 20 years, however many years it was when I was playing X to the Threat, 15 years, I guess. And seeing that I have the ability to look around the cockpit of my Argon Discoverer, I just imagined how amazing would this be to play in VR. But there wasn't VR back then. It may as well not be for me right now, but the idea that it is possible, that just that blows my mind. The fact that people get upset that Valve is making a spin-off of Half-Life just for VR. They get upset at this. We have an old saying in Romania, well, it's kind of a story. Is the toast moist? You're asking if the toast is moist. And that requires context. But I'm not gonna give it to you. X gonna give it to you, maybe someday. I'll call him, see if he's up to it. It doesn't matter. The idea is that I find it so incredibly weird. Because th this isn't an anti-consumer approach. It's not making it exclusive to one platform just for the sake of it. For monetary gain. It is, simply put, made for an interface that cannot be emulated properly with a mouse and keyboard or with a controller of any other type. It was made for a very, very specific system. It's like the Wii games, Wii Sports. That doesn't really work with anything other than a Wiimote. Well, yeah, well technically it does kind of auto-aim for you, so it maybe could work, but the spirit of it uh, was made for the Wiimote. Th this, is, this is made just for VR. It's not DRM to hell and back. I mean, probably won't be. Like, what would be the point of it? It's free if you have an index. And if you can afford one, that doesn't really matter because, my God, you are loaded. Holy hell, do you have a lot of money. It's not exclusive to the Epic Store that people keep... Actually, no, people have forgotten about it, haven't they? People have forgotten about the Epic Store. I see jokes about the Epic Store, but I don't see uh, I don't see the negativity anymore. I think they've forgotten. I think this took place this took the place of uh, the the rage of the day, the the crusade against which actually you no, know, the crusade on which everybody is against, or the crusade that everybody joined it just so they could hate something and be part of a thing that does stuff together like a community but so incredibly vile now i could just chalk that up to most people on the internet being 12 and unsupervised but to be a, a fan of half-life you'd have to be a bit older and a bit more uh, no no <laughs> no no not falling for that again i fell for that when i thought that fallout had people with you know brains in its community and it was a more cerebral type of game no, 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 not falling for that again. Um, the moral of the story is that sacrifices are necessary to achieve something. And Valve is currently sacrificing itself. Or at least a bunch of money. And a bunch of reputation and a whole lot of PR. But in three or four years, if this turns out to be a good game, oh, it's gonna be such an interesting world to live in. Provided we don't get nuked. And somewhere down the line, I still await the announcement of a SteamOS exclusive Half-Life 3. Because you can sure as hell bet that unless somebody with a heck of a lot of money, fuck you money as somebody put it, does that with a product that everybody wants to play, then Windows is still gonna be the reigning champion when it comes to install bases for video games. For better or for worse. It depends on how deep you want to go. Some years ago, when Facebook announced that it had bought Oculus, I considered that the VR revolution was confiscated, and it kind of was. Facebook, with all its money, couldn't really subsidize the cost of the Oculus Rift to bring it to the masses, and although it did sponsor some games, it didn't really put any weight behind it. John Carmack left. He's no longer working there. He said that 
Not enough progress is being made. He's not happy with it. And Facebook is a gigantic juggernaut compared to Valve. Not that Valve is a lightweight, but at least Valve is one of us. Valve is a gaming company. Valve, although it is mostly in the business of making money off of other people's work, it still is part of our ecosystem, our gaming existence, if you will. And in them there is hope. Hope that it will give an honest try, an honest effort. And if we can't count on that, then there really isn't much we can count on in this industry at all. Goodbye, everybody.